Welcome one, welcome all, welcome to the Ideal Auto Factory and today it's going to be all about cantilever suspension. So let's keep God first and get into this video. Cue the intro. Now this video is definitely wonderful because this is a supplement, a extra add-on to the SkidPad 1 guide that I already put out on SkidPad related to cantilever suspension, a beginner's guide. And what I plan to do today is give you a quick and simple add-on to that to help you better understand cantilever suspension and where to start. Now, first things first, whoa, 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 wait a minute. To help you better understand what cantilever suspension is, you gotta first know what cantilever suspension isn't. So right here is a standard shock setup. This is what you get from most standard kits and except for a few others, the GOM and um, I think there's a few now that make conversions for IFS kits. But when you have a traditional setup, you get to explore the world of ride height adjustment and shock preload. Uh, the stiffness of the shock doesn't really change, but the initial force needed to make the shocks move is both changed along with the ride height at the same time. And with this, you don't get any adjustability in certain aspects, but we're not going to go too deep into that. Just know this is what regular suspension looks like, not cantilever, IFS, inboard front suspension. Now right here is my converted Yusuke County NGE, and previously it was in a standard shock setup like so, but I converted it to this. And this is where I am going to start to show you where to begin to basically get your car to act like it did before and even better if the cards are played correctly. Now here I am, I'm on SkidPad and I'm looking at my very own guide that I'm giving to you and I'm just going to read a few things. Here are some examples of the suspensions. As you can see, you can go on here and learn tons of information about what exactly cantilever suspension is and, and where to start as far as tuning it. Now, a cantilever suspension setup is basically a beam or horizontal structure supported vertically. So here's the horizontal structure supported vertically right there, right here. And then there's a rod on this side that allows that movement to be translated. So this upward movement is translated horizontally this way through this rod here. Cantilever suspension is basically made up of three separate pieces, three separate parts. The rod, the actual rocker here, this part that is translating that force, and then the actual damper that absorbs the force here. This right here, this right here, and this right here. See, it looks so lovely. Watch that. Look at that. Look at that. Now, how do you get, how do you get back to this after transitioning from the normal layout, the traditional shock and shock tower. I wish I had a, a name I could call that. Ah, oh, I got it. How do you go and make your cantilever setup just as good as your non-cantilever setup? Look at that, I made that simpler. And here we have the setup that would come right after you converted it. You kept your dampers the same as you would if they were non cantilevered and this is what you end up with now if you look the chassis is pretty much on the table there's not much bounce that I have there and there's a lot of preload I can add to this so what I'm gonna do is simply start with the damper and just twist that about 10 turns or so make sure they equal that's a really awesome thing about cantilever you can kind of just look up top and be like ah that's equal 
Now that I've done that, let's see what we have. Whether we get the good old test. Yeah, that's nice. So it looks like back to normal here. But sometimes you might say, okay, well, I just did the same thing I would have did if I had shock towers. So what's the point? Why do all of this extra stuff if I'm just going to just adjust this and be back to where I need to be like I was if I didn't even convert my front end to this in the first place? Well, let me show you. Let's bring this back down. I'm going to bring it back down about 10 turns. Same on this side to where we don't have any bounce and it's pretty much touching the table. You know, barely anything. Let's go a little further there. So, nothing. Pretty much nothing. Now, I'm going to lengthen these. I'm going to lengthen the rod and get the car to raise up because this is my ride height adjustment now. I don't have to adjust for ride height here. So, I can keep this preload the same and then just adjust the ride height. See if I get it up here again to do the same bounce. And of course, for reference, here is the length currently at 23 millimeters. And we are back with an adjusted length longer than what was previously there. And that new length is 27 millimeters and as you can see there's a lot of bounce here it's not even touching the table anymore and if you look closely look at that the preload here is the same as it was before and we can even decrease it more now decrease it even more and and, and look we still have so much bounce so we went from having to have preload on the dampers to almost having no preload at all. Let's see what happens when we adjust these collars all the way back to zero preload. Oh, we're touching the we're we're touching again. Right down there. So as you can see, that is an advantage of cantilever suspension setups your preload is now isolated and you don't really need to adjust it as much because you have your own ride height adjustment right here. So if your springs are already made for the chassis, meaning it came in the kit or it's just something that already worked when it was right here with the shock tower, it's going to work up here and maybe even with less preload on it. Now there are cases where that's not that easy. When you switch things over, it seems like everything gets all out of whack and that's because there's so many adjustments. I know for a fact the Shark, Rhino Racing Shark IFS kit for the, for the D, direct drive steering system, that IFS kit comes with so many adjustments. The cantilever setup can be tuned to so many different springs because let's be honest, Rhino Racing doesn't make a damper, and they made it so you can use any damper, so I think, and therefore a lot of different settings, a lot of different places to put the holes and things like that to adjust your lever ratios. Now what exactly is a lever ratio? Okay, let, let's, I'm going to break it down for you as simple as I can. Let's go about here. So the lever ratio refers to pretty much, just think of it this way. You got the, the, the rotating of the rocker arm here. And then you got the distance from, you know, the center of it to the rod end here. And the distance of it from the center of it to the rod end here. So from the rod, the distance from there. And then you got the distance from here to the damper rod, right? So let's say they're, they're one to one. So that means pretty much the distance that this travels up is the distance that that travels this way. Well, hmm, you got this that comes into play here, but we're not going to make it too complicated. Just know if this one's longer, if this one's longer, this one, the, the motion up is shorter than how long this will travel. Hmm. Hope that makes sense. It's, the, it's a pretty much a game of distances. So how much uh, distance this will travel up 
versus that traveling backwards. And you can play around with the lever ratios. But to better help you understand, I'm going to get my TDP. And then this is where like all the settings can get a little complicated, but we're still going to keep it simple, all right? I'm just going to show you on the TDP and then we'll keep it going. So here's my TDP, and this is what I mean when I talk about lever ratio. So right there, you can see there's a, a spot you can put the screw here or you can put the screw there. That means the rod end is going to be here or it's going to be closer to that center point there. And then also down here, it's the same adjustment. So there's two holes here and there's also two holes there. So you can adjust the rod and how you know, far, far out away from the, the center point it is, or you can make it go in. So it is four different setups here that you can run. You can run up here and then inward, or outward, inward. Then you can run outward, outward. And then you can run inward, inward, or inward, outward. You know, different lever ratios give you different results. And then look also here. You can put the actual lever, the rocker arm, you can put it in different spots in relation to the lower arm here. And that gives you a different setting, a different behavior as well. Now, here are a couple things to look out for when it comes to cantilever suspension. So if you look here, these dampers are perfectly horizontal. When you start giving them lean or they start doing it at angles like this now if you look this does not rotate at an upward angle it rotates downwards so depending on how straight this is most of the times you're getting a kit but if you don't have this straight if you have it kind of angled a different way then the the actual rocker arm can fight against the the actual translation of force of upward to horizontal the vertical to horizontal force there now with everything that's been said i hope you have found a better understanding for cantilever suspension of cantilever suspension how it works what it does however you want to put it traditional suspension setups no hate on that cantilever setups is just my jam this is what i like but also i think that sometimes we can have a partiality to something else because we don't fully understand how something else works. Therefore, insert skate pad guide for cantilever suspension. As, as, this, as this video draws to a close, I do want to leave you with a few takeaways and of course I want to show you my personalized cantilever setup. But one of the takeaways I would say is that there are very much some pros and cons that come with cantilever suspension. The pro is that you get to isolate the tuning characteristics and you get a little more articulation out of your suspension. Now, you can basically let your spring be a spring now and nothing more. Your shock collar or the adjustment collar is now a different, uh, you can use it in a different way. You have a rod that can be your ride height adjustment and your ride height adjustment only and then also you can have a rocker arm with a lever ratio to adjust just how much articulation you may want or basically get fully custom with your setup now one of the cons is just everything that i explained that was a lot and with the traditional suspension setup with the shock tower and the damper just connected to the lower arm and the shock tower that's it there's no rocker arm, there's no lever ratios, there's none of that. You adjust your adjustment collar, screw it, you know, further down or further up. You got ride height, you got spring stiffness, all of that, and it's in one and then you're done. To me, I am just thankful that there are options. And maybe cantilever suspension isn't for you, but this video isn't to kind of sell you on it. This is just to help you understand. Now, let me show you my personal setup, and then we'll close this video out. For reference, let me show you the normal setup. And here is my personalized setup.
I really want to thank you all for watching this video. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. You got to see a little personal touch on my car. And I also want to thank Skidpad.1, Skidpad for making such a wonderful community, for being the hotspot of information for beginners, experts, anybody in between, chassis guys. We got build show offs. You got just anything you want to know, head on over to Skidpad. It's a wonderful place to be. Thank you for making this opportunity possible. I get to now supplement guides with videos. And now, I just want to ask, if you haven't already, like the video, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Thank you for your support. Hey, I'll catch you all in the next video. Keep God first and be blessed.